Okay, so I think we have started uh, characterizing the channel. In the uh, last class we have discussed uh, linear time invariant system uh, and uh, what kind of system we need for uh, realizing a distortionless system. So this is something we have done. So for uh, linear time invariant system, we have already told that it has to be linear. That means input, uh, whatever you give, corresponding output if you know, if you give the linear combination of the input, so you should be expecting the linear combination of the output. And time invariant means, suppose a particular delay x t within a system gives you y t. If I delay the input, so if I pass t minus t 0, so output will be just similar, just delayed by same amount. Okay. So, it will be uh, just a same output. So, basically if I give a delay, it remains time invariant. The output also will be just delayed by that signal. The signal strength and the output signal, the way it looks, there will be no change in that. Okay. So, that was a linear time invariant system. We have told that it can be characterized by it only one thing, which is the transfer function or the impulse response of it. And always uh, we can uh, prove that the uh, if I put a input as x t, the output will be always if I know the impulse response of that particular system. So, it should be convolution of those two. So, impulse response and the input function. So, always y t must be x t convolution h t. Okay. So, this is always true and the corresponding Fourier transform should be transfer function multiplied by input signal. So, this two things are always true for a linear time invariant signal or system. Right. So, this is something we have told and then we went to a special class of linear time invariant system. So, where we were talking about dispersion uh, sorry distortion less system. So, for that we have told that distortion less means the amplitude should remain the same. Okay. So, what does that mean? Amplitude remains the same means that h f should give me the same characteristics means after passing it through h f, the y f should have same characteristics as h f. So, h, sorry x f. So, therefore, h f must be 1. So, I can write h f must be 1. If it is any signal, I have to say that for all frequency value, h f must be 1. So, it should look like the amplitude spectra of the or the transfer function, the amplitude representation of that must look like this, so all frequency component. If x f is band limited, so that means the x f we are talking about is something like this, then if I wish to get y f similar to x f, I only need to ensure that within the band h f is 1. Beyond that whatever happens I do not care because anyway I do not have any frequency component of that signal beyond that band. Okay. So, therefore, I need to at least ensure that if it is a band limited signal that within that band, so minus b to plus b, h f must be at least 1, beyond that it can be anything. And if it is not band limited signal, then I have to say that h f must be 1 at all frequency okay. or I should say mod h f must be 1 for all frequency, okay. so more precisely because phase we have not talked about. And then distortion less means there is also we have to talk about the phase and the effect of that phase. So, what will happen if we have already told that distortion less means I put an input through a particular system okay, which does not create any distortion. So, therefore, the input should look same and only thing that can happen it might get translated in time nothing else. Okay. So, there might be a sudden delay to the signal, okay. but the exact signal should be replicated at the output, the whole signal might get translated, not some portion of it gets translated, other portion does not get translated, then probably the signal will be different. Okay. So, that has to happen, therefore, my output should be whatever x t I give, I must get something like x t minus t 0. Okay. So, immediately I know for the corresponding h f, we, we can now do, do the Fourier transform of this one. So, output, so that should be y f, which is we already know that that should be x f into e to the power minus j 2 pi f t 0. So, this is something we know. Now, this is the x f. So, therefore, this system h f must be this one. 
So, I can write my h f as 1 into e to the power minus j 2 pi f t 0. So, this 1 is the amplitude part of that and this is the phase part of this. So, I should say 2 pi f t 0 this minus that is actually the phase. Okay. So, if I plot that phase it should look like this. So, it should be linear okay, with a slope of this t 0. Okay. So, that is all that is happening for a means now we have characterized a distortion less system. That means, if we give a input to the distortion less system, I should be expecting just a replica of that maximum I can means take into account a delay. So, this is what I have done x t I told output must be x t minus t 0. If you say okay, I can still take a attenuation because that might be inevitable if I transmit it uh, transmit a signal over a channel. Uh, this is the channel characteristics we are talking about. So, if we transmit it there must be a attenuation, but the attenuation should be irrespective of frequency. That means, all frequency must have similar attenuation. So, I should be able to see if x t is there, I will be able to see k into this where k is less than 1. Okay. So, immediately k will come out then this will become k. So, basically what happens my h f is mod h f is still the same instead of 1 it is k. Okay and the phase is linear okay, with respect to frequency. So, this is the characteristics of a distortion less system or I should now start talking about channel because we started characterizing the channel. What I want from the channel? Whatever I transmit I need to receive similar thing that is why the channel is characterized as means it should be ideally distortion less. That means, it is neither creating any deformities or distortion in the overall signal characteristics. It might just give me some delay of course, that will be there because if I transmit over a long distance I know that the even the fastest of carrier which is uh, light in free space probably that will still have a velocity okay, finite velocity c and of course, for a distance always there will be a delay. So, anything I will be transmitting there will be a delay. Okay. So, that delay I can take no problem in that but signal there will be no distortion. Okay. So, if I wish that my channel should have this characteristics, it is almost like all pass characteristics and the phase should be linear. So, ideally I want that and if I say it is a already we have talked about that, if I say that it is band limited then I just need to ensure that it is flat the channel characteristics or channel transfer function is flat over that band of interest. Okay. Now, what we will try to see is we will try to see if this is possible in a channel and if somehow that is not the characteristics of the channel what happens. Okay. Ideally, we would be expecting this, but probably we will not get that. So, let us try to see if this is not happening. So, I will just go through two examples. One is that my amplitude is something like this. Okay. So, I am expecting a signal of bandwidth B. So, okay. so, this is not the signal, this is actually H f. Suppose, I have a signal which is anything maybe, let us say this is the signal. Okay. So, this is actually G or I should say capital G f corresponding there is a signal which is band limited within minus b to plus b. Okay. Now, I pass this signal through this which is my channel characteristics. So, the channel characteristics is the phase is linear, but the amplitude has a curvature okay. it is not fixed which is ideal. If this happens what will be my overall reception that is what I want to see. Okay. So, let us say I will be transmitting a particular uh, pulse. Okay. So, let us say this is that pulse. All right. So, this is that pulse or maybe some other pulse which, which looks like something like this. Okay. So, whichever pulse it is I will be transmitting this pulse and assume that it is almost band limited. That means, uh, whatever is outside its band, okay, uh, 
uh, that is suppressed or I might uh, even represent the pulse with a sink. Okay. If I uh, represent the pulse with a sink, then it is band limited. Okay. But of course, the pulse will not be time limited, that is something I know, but the sink probably will die down after some time. Okay. So, this is suppose this is my pulse. Okay. So, that pulse will be band limited, that is something I know already because I have represented it as sink pulse. Now, suppose that sync pulse is being transmitted over this channel characteristics, which is something like this. So, it is actually 1 plus k cos 2 pi f capital T into the phase part e to the power minus j 2 pi f T d, let us say, or small t d. Okay. When my f is less than or equal to b and it is 0 when f is greater than b. Okay. So, this is the characteristics I have taken a sinusoidal, it is just cut it uh, truncated sinusoidal. So, it was like this and I have just truncated it up to minus b and plus b and this t is the period of that sinusoidal okay. or cosinusoidal I should say. Okay. So, that is my overall transfer characteristic or I should actually write it like this, it is this is let us say 1 and the sinusoidal actually goes like this. Okay. So, or I should say it goes like this. Okay. So, it is above 1, I have something called 1, above 1 there is a swing. Okay swing of strength this k right so this is what is happening right so that's the sinusoidal i i have a sinusoidal and above 1 there is a swing of strength k let's say this swing is 2k so at this point it is 1 plus k right so this is what it is at means f equal to 0, it is actually 1 plus k. So, this must be 1 plus k and b whatever value it will get. So, this kind of I am just creating a shape okay, so that it is not flat and I, I wish to actually see what happens to my input pulse. So, this is my h f. So, therefore, what should be my y f? I will be passing g f through that. So, it should be h f into g f. So, within the band of my interest, okay, what I will be getting? I will be getting this. So, this particular thing, this h f is actually if I multiply this, it should be multiplied with this one over a box of minus b 2 plus b. So, I can write this as g f into a box function which is of size 2 b. Okay, so, minus b 2 plus b, it is multiplied by that because rest of the part it is 0. So, if I just multiply this particular function with a box function, then I will be getting that particular part, rest of the part will be 0. Okay, so, this I will be getting into that whole function. So, 1 plus k cos 2 pi f t e to the power minus j 2 pi f t d. Right? I can write it this way. So, now I have two terms, I can have g f into this. Now, what I can write because this multiplied by 1 will actually give me g f only because out, outside nothing else is there. So, that will be all 0. So, I can whenever I multiply g f with a box function, I will be getting just g f. So, g f into 1 into this, so it is the power minus j 2 pi f t d, that is one term plus g f again multiplied by box function that should as g f is band limited that should return me g f only as long as this box function is beyond my minus b and plus b or, or this bandwidth. So, I will be getting k cos 2 pi f t okay, e to the power minus j 2 pi f t d fine. So, this is what I am getting. Now, I wish to see the output signal that means after transferring through this transfer function which is my channel now 
what do I expect at the other end. So, y t must be the Fourier inverse transform of this. Fourier inverse transform of g f is g t. If I multiply by this, we know the Fourier transform of that, that should be g t minus t d. Right? Now, this is the other thing where this cos function I can write as summation of 2 exponential. So, it will be e to the power plus j 2 pi f t and plus e to the power minus j 2 pi f t divided by 2. So, I will get a k by 2 outside and then g f into e to the power plus that term and e to the power this one will be there. So, therefore, I should get something which is again shifted that is shifted t minus t d minus t and there should be another term k by 2 g shifted as t minus t d plus t right that is all I will be getting. If I just put the Euler's theorem, Euler's theorem and we put e to the power plus j 2 pi f capital T and plus e to the power minus j 2 pi f t and there is a half term right coming out. So, that is why I am getting k by 2. So, what do I get now? I had a pulse ideally I should have expected this right. My target was that if I want a distortion less channel then I should be getting just a delayed version of that pulse that was all good. But I have now two spurious term which are further advanced delayed or came little bit earlier. Okay. So, if I just have a pulse let us say that is this thing which is this pulse. So, what will happen? The first part will be this first part will be just a delayed version of that pulse. So, this will be delayed let us say that is my T d. So, it will be delayed by that amount. The other part will be it will be further delayed by T d plus d plus t right and the attenuation there will be some attenuation which is k by 2. So, there should be some attenuated pulse of same duration where this point is T d plus t and there should be another point where this is probably T d minus t right. So, the summation of these two things whichever way you represent it, it will look like this. Right? The pulse will look like this. So, it is summation of all these three. So, what has happened now? It actually starts from this T d minus t and it goes up to T d plus t plus the pulse duration let us say that duration is delta. Okay. So, overall pulse duration is now happening to be T d plus t plus delta that is this end point minus T d plus t right. So, it happens to be this T d gets cancelled. So, your pulse width is 2 t plus delta which should be ideally just delta but now I am getting a distorted pulse this is definitely a distorted pulse and the pulse width has been extra stretched by this amount 2 t. And you can see that is just coming from this cosinusoidal. Okay. So, make this flatter this cosinusoidal will go away and you will get your pulse back exactly. This particular part that we have described is called dispersion. Whenever you will be discussing, uh, means later on uh, in other courses, when you will, will be discussing about digital communication, you will see that that has a profound effect in pulse communication or digital communication. So, whatever pulse you will be putting what happens whenever you have a non ideal channel the way I we have described that you have some amplitude variation of the transfer function of uh, a particular filter or particular channel then you will get a dispersion that means it will just actually broaden your pulse. So, if you have a 
continuous stream of pulse which are carrying information. Okay, the pulses are carrying either is it 0 or 1 accordingly the pulses are encoded. If you have that and if the pulses are getting broadened what will happen? It will actually spill over the next pulse okay, because you have a dispersion or the pulse broadening so it will spill over the next pulse. The problem is more it spills then the next pulse detection will become difficult. So, this is a particular thing which is called intersymbol interference. ISI, you'll, you'll hear this term in digital communication more often than analog communication. Of course, the same effect will be there in analog communication. So, in analog communication, you do not have a pulse, you will see whatever is transmitted that is getting actually stretched. So, every uh, in time, whatever is there that is getting stretched and they are getting means they are distorting the other time signal in a means which are in advance in time. Okay. So, they will keep distorting it. Okay. So, that distortion probably in analog communication will be there, you will not be able to uh, take them out. In digital what happens because it is just encoded signal either 1 or 0, so you still have a possibility of detecting it even though there is a distortion. Okay. So, suppose I am transmitting 1 or 0, it is just is it 1 or 0 that is all that I have to detect. If there is a spillover, if I can still say that okay, by the pattern of the signal I can detect that it is 1 or it is 0. If I can do that, that is good enough. Okay. But there will be a point when I will not be able to detect that and that is where the intersymbol interference actually becomes very severe. So, you will see the kind of channel impairments we are talking about here, where the channel transfer function is little bit non-ideal, there will be creating this is kind of interference the kind of interference that we are creating that is within the same channel. That means, the frequency band we are there, we are continuously transmitting signal the suppose it is a pulse stream. So, a single pulse is getting giving interference to the next pulse that is what called within inter channel interference. So, the channel means interference is creating created by the same signal. So, the signal itself is creating interference to himself. So, that is the problem whenever you have a non-ideal characteristics of a particular channel okay. and this particular phenomena is called as dispersion. So, what will generally happen if I can just give an example. So, if you see I have suppose a pulse stream of this transmitted. So, what will happen once it is if it is a non-ideal channel then what you will see that once a pulse is transmitted it will have this kind of distortion because most of the time you will have uh, uh, low pass effect in the channel and the low pass effect will start creating this thing, it will start smoothening the sharper edges. Okay. So, it will start creating this kind of thing. Okay. Now, this is 0, if this sharpening sorry this de sharpening of the edges is too much then what will happen? It will go like this and he will go like this. So, 1s and zeros will be it is almost like capacitor charging and capacitor discharging because you will be anyway low pass filter you can always realize with a RC circuit. right? So, if the channel is low pass filter it will be almost like passing a pulse through a RC circuit and this is what will be happening. So, what is eventually happening you can see now the effect of intersymbol interference. It is just happening because of the non-ideal characteristics of the channel because you are passing this pulse through the channel and this is what you are getting and then in this portion can you now detect whether it is if the pulse was transmitted like this you can easily detect it is 0. Can you now detect whether this is 0 or 1? You cannot probably because for detecting whether this is 1 or 0 you will probably put a threshold and you will try to see whether the signal level is beyond that threshold. Okay. It is below threshold you say it is 0, if it is above threshold you say it is 1, but that is getting markier over here you would not be able to detect that. So, this is where means your previous signal it is actually because the spurious the spreaded part of the previous signal has not really vanished and that is creating interference over here. Okay. This is what happening. So, within the same channel it is just the previous part of your signal is creating interference to you which will be happening if you have a non-ideal channel characteristic. Okay. So, let us try to see 
if the same thing is happening in the phase. So, I have a modified phase if that is happening. Okay. So, let us say I have a channel which looks like this. So, I have channel which is ideal in amplitude. So, this is 1, but the phase part how it should be? It should be linear with respect to f, but suppose it is not. So, it is minus 2 pi right f t 0 and then minus there is some modulation k sin 2 pi f t. Okay. And we are assuming that this k is much much less than 1. See most of the time we will see this non ideality of the channel will not be too heavy. In the previous example also there was in the amplitude there was k cos 2 omega. So, that k value will be pretty low. Okay. Once the k value is pretty low there will be still some spreading, but it will not be that severe. Okay. So, the other two pulse delayed pulse we have generated if I can just give those bring that example back. So, if this particular k value is very low they will have a lower strength and the corresponding this one will be of very low strength. So, the pulse spreading that is being happening will be pretty low in strength. right? So, that is what will be happening, but so this is something where the non ideality will not be very severe. Okay. So, that is why I wanted to tell this that here also probably the non ideality is coming due to this portion that will probably not be very severe. So, whatever that is if we just consider this let us try to see what will be the effect of it. Okay. So, again let us try to compute the y f that should be let us say I have a g f multiplied by the filter transfer function okay, which is 1 into e to the power minus this or e to the power this. So, it should be just e to the power minus j 2 pi f t 0 into e to the power minus k sin 2 pi f that should be some capital T. Okay. Right. Now, we will be putting some approximation over here. So, g f this is fine e to the power minus j 2 pi f t 0. Now, this you expand in Taylor series. Okay. So, we will be trying to put this approximation. So, we expand in Taylor series and anything because k is in the argument right. So, there, sh there should be terms of plus means k then k square k cube and all those things. So, higher order terms because k is very small higher order terms we can neglect. So, I can just take the first term and the second means just uh, varying with this one k that term. So, first and second term. So, I can write this as 1 minus j k j was missing. So, j k sin 2 pi f capital T right this is something I can write. Now, just expand it. So, this is as it is minus j 2 pi f t 0 right. So, it should be the first term should be as it is the second term should be minus j k again I have this sign. So, I can write that like the previous one again e to the power j minus e to the power minus j divided by 2 j. So, there should be a 2 j coming out and I should be getting this g f into e to the power this will be there minus j 2 pi f t 0 into e to the power j 2 pi f capital T and then minus minus plus. So, that should be j k divided by 2 j. So, j gets cancelled everywhere and g f e to the power minus j 2 pi f t 0 into e to the power minus j 2 pi f capital T right. This is what we get. Again I want to see the pulse that is exactly the same if you see just there will be a minus sign. So, this becomes g t minus t 0 this if we do Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform. This one will be minus k by 2 g t minus t 0 plus t and this should be plus k by 2 
g t minus t 0 minus capital T right. So, I am getting three pulses again similarly they will have means they will be creating some distortion and there will be a pulse spreading. So, whether we get a pulse transmitted through a transfer function which is non ideal either in the amplitude or in the phase I almost get the similar effect that there will be a distortion which will be um, getting means created in the pulse and the distortion is nothing but it broadens the pulse and it start creating inter symbol interference. Okay. So, this is something we have seen and we are calling this as dispersion. Next we will see if the channel is little bit differently non ideal that means if it is showing non linear characteristics then we will probably see that it will not only create interference to his own channel it will start creating interference to other channels. Okay. So, we will see that will be more detrimental uh, in a system where frequency division multiplexing is being used. So, if you have multiple signals are transmitted over multiple frequency band one particular thing if the channel is non ideal it will start creating spurious frequency term into the other channels. Okay. So, that is the other effect of channel we will try to examine in the next class. Okay. Thank you.